So G is simply the the, the, the G it has to satisfy only this equation and the P has to satisfy this. So any function suppose I have a duct and no boundary excite and then I can measure G Right? Because there's no boundary. And I know this G in this case is some coefficient and exponential JK X minus X zero. Because I know that from X equal zero when I impose it the way will propagate either this way or this way. Therefore I have absolute <coughs> beta. This one can be determined from the condition of this continuity at x equal zero because when I apply the impulse discontinuity then there is a discontinuity right so I use I can use this or or I can use another Green's function So there is a there is a, some freedom to select the Green's function. So one could select the G that is zero on x equal zero and x equal L. Then I can remove this term. Or I can select the G that has a zero value at x equal zero, dg dx has a zero value at x equal zero and L, then I can remove this. So, so depending on the selection of G, I can either remove this or remove that. And also, if I integrate sound field from x zero to x equal zero minus, and then x equal 0 plus to there, then this term, this term is 0. Right? Then what I have to do? So I have to do the integration 0 to x 0 minus and x 0 plus to the L, 0 to x 0 minus, x 0 to the L, then I can get a solution too. Okay. What this physically means, let's study again graphically using a simpler case. For the string case, Okay, let's, let's study this concept again using string because using is more, string's case is more visible, right? Okay, I want to find the solution yxt, say this is pxt. I want to find out Px, how to do it. Of course, eigenfunction solution, eigenfunction approach or Green's function approach can do it. But if I want to use this concept, then what I have to do is, so first I have to find out or choose G. Okay, that means, okay, what if, what, what, what about the solution when I put 
at x. I can either measure or I can calculate. Okay? And then put this solution to okay, G dp dx Here, there is a P, and here is a P, and here is a P. Therefore, we call this integral equation because unknowns are included in the integral form. Right? <laughs> so it's graduate level headache concept but certainly it's very interesting I will talk a little bit one more one more thing that means if I measure velocity and pressure in the boundary if I know G then I can predict the pressure at any point if I select the G, that is zero on boundary. Then, if I just measure pressure on x equal zero and x equal L, then I can predict the P. Great. Why? Right? That means, hey, if I if I measure pressure over here and pressure over here, then I can predict the P using this equation. That is great. That generally means that if I know pressure or velocity on the boundary, then I can predict the pressure inside of the boundary. That is the foundation of boundary element method. That is the key concept of boundary element method. <coughs> what do you do is just to extend this concept to the surface. And you can argue that if I measure pressure in the boundary, then I can predict the pressure inside of the volume that is enclosed by the boundary. Okay? For the uh, ocean wave, for ocean wave, I mean, there are some students come from civil engineering, right? You, 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 you come from civil engineering? Yes, and also, and also, another student? You are the only student come from civil? Okay. You have a wave ocean wave, right? And you want to predict the, the wave amplitude in a harbor. This method says that if you know the pressure on the surface, on the harbor, then you can predict it. Long time ago that was done by great scientists already. So, boundary element method is nothing new. It's done in hydrodynamics a long time ago. And now, acousticians regard that the boundary element method is invented by acousticians. No, that is not true. Okay. 